Did you come expecting something from God tonight? Man, he is faithful, isn't he? I am so, so excited about what God has for our lives going forward. Amen. So uh, <clears throat> I want to talk about something tonight um, having to do with how many like resolutions? Do you, have you made some resolutions? <laughs> What's wrong with resolutions? <laughs> so what do they end up being? Defeat. <laughs> Defeat. <laughs> those pounds did not go where I said they were going to go. Uh, some of those kinds of things. <clears throat> but everybody wants to do it. It comes to, uh, you know, uh, celebrating the new year. It's the way people do it. It's kind of weird. I was in Africa one year um, over Christmas and New Year's both. And, uh, my goodness, they were playing drums all night long. And, of course, they speak French over there, so they go around, bon nuit, bon nuit, you know. And, and um, they're all drunk in the streets and all that kind of stuff. Uh, they're just using it for an excuse to to party. And I don't, I, I never heard, understood the word party either when you're, um, I never, never mind. I just, <laughs> I'm just glad I never went that way myself. I guess some people have fun with that. But um, uh, so the resolution thing too. I, you know, I might have tried something once or twice, um, but I've kind of got. Have you ever gotten disillusioned with resolutions? Disillusioned with resolutions. And so what I want to look at tonight is going from resolutions to revolutions, because the difference between a revolution is is. You burn bridges, don't you? <laughs> so you? You don't go back. You you uh, get rid of the old regime regime altogether, don't you? And you go in a new direction. And um, this is what we have in Christ. And it has when people make resolutions, it's because they want things to be right in a certain way or another, right? Uh, because things aren't right. <laughs> so it's all about what you're doing it's all I'm going to do this I'm going to do that and so so much uh, there's some people um, do you meet people that obviously they think that they're doing a lot of stuff right you can kind of tell by the, the elevation of their nose <laughs> right <laughs> they're going to drown if they have a downpour right because <laughs> their nose is sticking up in the air <laughs> uh, but anytime we're focused on what we're doing good or what we're doing bad it's the old way we need a revolution we need and, and this is what Jesus came to give us is a revolution from resolutions amen so I'm just going to read out of Galatians here a little bit today, because um, I think there's some freedom. How many know that we're free in Christ? And what are we free from, though? You know, sometimes people say, I, I'm free. And I like to sing, I'm free to run, I'm free to dance, I'm free to do all these things but what are what's the revolution that has taken place in Christ that actually sets us free what is so amazing about America we say it's a land of the free and the home of the brave you know it's, it almost doesn't do any good to be free if you're not brave because <laughs> you gotta you gotta go do something don't you, you gotta take advantage of it if you just sit back and don't do, that's the problem I think partly with America right now is there's a lot of freedom but a lot not a lot of bravery people don't want to get up and do anything you know uh, I mean there is a lot of good people y'all are really good people and so the other people whoever they might be uh, but Christ has brought us into a complete deliverance from what we do and, and you know there's it's not it's not that what we do doesn't matter, but it's the way to be right is completely different now. Because the things that bother us about ourselves, the condemnation, the, the pride, whatever it is, it's all about what we're doing right or what we're doing wrong. 
And in Christ, he said, there's a whole new way where it's not about that at all. And you're going to actually get it by this new revelation, re revolution. Amen? It's not about what you're doing right or wrong. So, you know, you meet people a lot of times uh, and you, you begin to share you know, Jesus, or you begin to share the gospel, and what, what, what a lot of people think, they think, well, if I'm just good enough. What I want to touch on that, that needs to be real in our lives is even in, in Christ, it's not about what we're doing. It's not about what we're doing better than somebody else. Amen? Because you know what? Some of the most bound people are people that think they know something about God. Right? And Christ has delivered us. That's bondage. You know what I mean? Anybody that thinks they're in a certain place in God because of what they know, because of what they do, because of... What is that? That's the law, isn't it? That's, that's the old law. And that's not the freedom that Christ has brought us to. He has brought us to a revolution where all those things about what you do right and what you do wrong are, he took on the cross with him. And he started a revolution. Amen? That completely frees you from those kinds of things. Now here's the, here's the danger with them. Is, you know, the person that says, well, I just think I've, I've, I've lived a really good life. The problem is, as soon as you get into whether you're good or not, all it takes is one bad. That's good. You know what I mean? Yeah. As, long, as long as you start judging upon how good you are, well, then all it takes is one bad, and then you're out there. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's been amazing to me recently, you know, where there's... Uh, uh, it, not that people, what the, some people have done... But there's been some famous people recently that it's been found out some of their actions. And um, they're, 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 they're not acceptable. But the thing is, somebody that has been beloved for so long, and people have loved them no matter what they thought, something is discovered about them, and what does it do? It completely disables their reputation. And you know what? That person is still the wonderful person. That's, they've got something wrong. But you, when you get into the realm of judging people upon their, their, their faults or their hang-ups or anything else, you're into a realm of bondage. And you're not getting yourself out of it either. Does that make sense? Because <laughs> I was thinking about this. We do this to people. Yeah, but... Uh, Actually, Paul talks about this throughout Galatians. He says, you used to do anything for me. You used to believe in me, no matter what. And something has happened. You've gotten it, and all it takes is a little bit of doing right or wrong. And it becomes a, it defiles the whole bunch because it's outside of Christ's revolution. Amen? Amen? Where does bitterness start? It starts with completely disabling grace and saying, I get to judge somebody. Even if they've done you wrong. Paul says that in this passage too. I, we might not read it, but in Galatians here he says, you, you can't offend me. You've done nothing wrong to me. Because I, I'm not in that realm anymore. I've, I've experienced a revolution from what you can do right or wrong to me. And that also delivers me. Amen? Now I know this is, what is the deliverance? And it's, it's what we were doing here tonight. And, and, you know, God is calling us to something that is, is completely, it disrupts what we're used to doing. We're, we're just so, uh, no child left behind. Everybody gets the same education. Everybody gets the same opportunity. Everybody, we're trying to put every, make everybody right on our own. And God says, it's not about what you're doing right or wrong. It's about who you know. What, what does Christ bring us to? A relationship with him. Amen? And here's what I, you know what? It's still a, an evolving revelation for me. 
is that he never holds anything against us. You know? People will. Now, that, this doesn't mean that we get to be unholy, but this is the way to holiness, is relationship, not condemnation. You're not going to fix yourself by, by feeling bad enough. All feeling bad enough does is awakens the old. It awakens the, the junk from the old and the law. Condemnation is just law. Right? And the way to be right is relationship with Him. Amen? In Christ, the harm of the smallest falter is successfully rebelled against to resolve the needed transformation. Let me say that again. A little bit going on there, amen? <laughs> what is a revolution? I looked up the, 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 the meaning of revolution. And it, it, it's a revolt. It's a rebellion. And then if you get down to the bottom of what I was looking at, it says transformation. But I believe there's a combination of that. You almost have to rebel against that old thing. You have to revolt against it. We're not going there anymore. I'll tell you what, every day the enemy wants to, we, he want, when we're waking up, he wants to say, I'd like to point out something here. And where does oppression come from? What are forebodings? Something that's not going to be right based upon what I've experienced already, what somebody's done wrong, what I've done wrong. But I've gotten used to doing. And, and what do what, what the resolutions do? We already talked about this. The problem is you don't do them, right? And so what it reinforces in you is that you can't do it. And it reinforces this whole idea about what you can or can't do. And, God's, and, Jesus, and Christ says, <laughs> we can do all things through Christ. But if we're trying to do the things, we're in the law. And yet we can do all things. But how do we do that? In Christ. Just letting go of our own abilities and taking on His. Amen? Galatians 3. 23. So I'm just going to uh, touch on uh, these, the third, fourth, and fifth chapters and, and bring out a few things in these three chapters. Faith or belief in our unity with Christ came to take us from the position of slave uh, to, uh, let's see. To, to someone who finds desired righteousness through relationship. So when we, when we believe in God, what are we doing? We're, we're believing that he's actually taken us out of that, that old realm into a relationship realm. So Galatians, he talks about this. He, he says, before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until the faith that was to come would be revealed. So Paul refers to the old way that we're, we came out of as being a slavery realm where everything was about rules and we had people that would govern over us or, or uh, ways that would govern over us based upon laws, right? Uh, so the law was our guardian until Christ came that we might be justified by faith. Now that this faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you were baptized into Christ, have all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There's neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So so with the law, there was a requirement of, of, of a slave. What is a slave supposed to do? They have to please their master, don't they? They have to do everything their master says. This is what sin does to us, right? It says you have to do this. and So you say, oh, yes, I will do that. 
But the difference between a slave and an heir is that the heir has it no matter what. You know what I mean? It's a relationship. It's because of who you're related to now. <laughs> you're, a, you're a prince. You're a princess. You're, it's, it's just what you have a right to now. Amen? I love this. I, I, you know, uh, I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to... God says, don't, don't, try to please, don't, don't try to please me out of your own works. The way you'll please me is just by being with me. Yeah. Amen? And then I'll fix your works. It's a revolution of thought. And it's a rebellion against the law. Amen? It's not a freedom to be unholy. It's the way to be holy. Amen? It says, in the old way, we had a guardian. Christ came, and no longer do we have a guardian. We have a relationship with our Father now. Amen? So let's go to Galatians 4. Starting in the first verse. So what I am saying is that as long as an heir is under age, he is no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. Now he's talking to people who were part of the inheritance, weren't they? But they were part of the law until Christ came along. Now, there's a state that you can choose to be in with regard to this, right? The heir is just like a slave until he enters into an awareness of his being an heir. Now, we're not as familiar with some of this probably as they were back then. You know, like with, with Jacob getting, a, getting uh, Esau's blessing and, and um, you know, there was a... There was, a, there was an hierarchy that, that was a bigger thing than what we experience today. But as, as, and he's saying, well, let, let's relate to this somehow. Even though the, an heir already owns the whole estate, they're just like a slave until they enter into an awareness of it. Right? That's what Jesus came to do. It's to change our, our state. The heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also, when we are underage, we are we were when we were underage, we were in slavery under the elemental spiritual forces of the world. But when the time set had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. So in Christ, we're no longer an heir that acts like a slave, that is under a law, that's under a guardian. Now, let's just, <laughs> let's just take hold of this because there's revelation. You can still live like a slave, right? If you're still subjecting yourself to the ways of a slave, even even in, in trying to please God, if it becomes something where we're condemning ourselves at every step, or you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Say, I've, I've, I've brought you to a revolution from that resolution stuff. You don't have to fix yourself. Amen? You've just received an adoption to sonship. Now you are an heir. Amen? And because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. You know, this, this has a lot to do with the heart of, of what uh, worship life is about. Is that same amazing thing that took place when we got saved. That transformation that brought tears. 
that overwhelming awareness of the presence of God, of His forgiveness, of His love. Amazing, right? <laughs> that wasn't supposed to be a one-time experience. Amen? That was the entrance, that was the door to the revolution that would completely transform everything about our lives. Amen? So what happened when that took place? There was an infusion of a spirit inside of us that now we don't, we don't just talk about a God somewhere else. He's an intimate relationship that we have. Amen? <laughs> do you like to do this with your kids? It, maybe I'm just weird or something, but it's just, I just get wonderful feelings. You know? We're actually supposed to do that with our brothers and sisters in the Lord, too. Amen? We're supposed to be affectionate ones. We're supposed to be, there's supposed to be a love of, uh, the, the love of God is shed abroad. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to be touching the core of our being. Amen? <laughs> right? Because this is where Jesus came to take us out of the realm of criticism and, and, the, and the realm of, of separation. He came to, to, to call us all to an, a ministry of reconciliation where we're all brought together. You know, when he was talking about that, he said, we're all sons. There's no Jew, there's no Gentile, there's no, there's no this. There's, we're all one in Christ. And it's a revolution. Amen? The world is continually trying to cause dis dissension, isn't it? Amen? Now here's the challenge, and this is what I, I believe Paul is addressing here, is we've been, our, our status has changed. But it does no good if we continue to see ourselves in this old realm. And it's, 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 you know, when we talk about having our, uh, um, the transformation of our minds, what, that's critical in this regard. To not be just resolution-oriented people. Amen? Oh, I'm going to do that better. I'm going to pray more this year. I'm going to... Well, you know, there's some good things we can set up. But what's the main thing we can do is set our hearts towards God. Amen? You set your heart towards God, and a lot of other stuff will follow into place where it needs to go. And that's really the revolution that, that, that he's called us to. To where we say, but, but we have to go there. That, that, that is a, up to us. Right? Where was that passage? It says, you've clothed yourself with Christ. You've clothed yourself. You clothe yourself. Amen? I'll tell you what, you get clothed up with Christ, sin doesn't have the place it had before right it's not about whether you will fall into that and you're afraid of falling into it anymore no you're clothed in christ it's your way out yeah. amen say so i'm not going to do those other things that, what you know when we repent what's the greatest repentance we need to have it's a repentance from a heart that is impressed enticed and given to other gods in our life amen and we, we repent from... Remember in the Old Testament, uh, he said, you're not going to have any other gods before me. And he, and he promised the children of Israel, you go into the land of Canaan, and you'll have, you know, abundance. You'll defeat all your enemies. But I need to be your uno God. Right? Why did they start doing things that were reproachable? Because they started serving other gods. <laughs> and it's the same thing for us. Amen? <laughs> God says, I'm going to have to at some point, and <laughs> I've already, but, but it's going to be up to you to nurture this passion for me. Amen? It's, it's like that last song we sang. 
The more I seek you, the more I find. If you're not seeking him, you're not finding him. You're just not. Amen? And every time you do find him, you find peace, you find joy, and you find a revolution from resolutions. Amen? It's no longer about what you're doing right or wrong. You're in the presence of the Holy One. There's a beauty in the presence of the Holy One that you don't acquire on your own. Amen? So, verse 7, you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. But what is an heir? That's somebody that it's just theirs. It's just theirs. I would like the mountain on a hilltop, and I would like a horse, and I would like... No. <laughs> He's, he's going to provide more than all the stuff in the world that would, would pull our hearts away to other. What gets you excited? You know, we're, we're going to start fasting this, this coming Sunday. And, and uh, why, why do we fast? Because there's other things that gets, get us excited. I could say a few foods right now and we might start salivating, right? <laughs> like a taco or a burrito or a... a, a I don't know, a steak or <laughs> uh, chips, chips at Chili's, man. All right, I'm salivating. All right. <laughs> so, so why do we fast? So we can set aside some other stuff that we, like, we naturally gravitate to. And what ha needs to happen during that time? We don't become grumpy people and just waiting for this, it to finally be over. We clothe ourselves in Christ and actually begin to salivate about Him. Amen? Amen? Because this is our way to the revolution that God has called us to, that Christ has provided. This is why He, he gave His life. So it's not about what we do right or wrong anymore. It's about who we know in Him. Amen? We're a son of the Holy One. Amen? Formerly, when you did not know God, you were slaves to those who by nature are not gods. <laughs> Before you knew God, there was stuff that wasn't even worthy of being gods, and you worshipped it. Right? Uh, now, here, here's the thing for that we need to just be sensitive to. I'm not... I'm not uh, we, we need to be... What does God do for us if he loves us? He, he chastens us. He says, okay, let's make some changes. Because this is what I'm wanting to do with this myself tonight. I said, God, change me a little bit here. I want to be changed. He's not going to change us if we don't want to. <laughs> but he's, he, he's, he's wanting us to, to set aside some other things and actually not make it like it's somebody else, but it's me. Amen? There's some other things in my life that I do get, I gravitate to. And I'm going to need to set those aside and actually clothe myself with a passion for God. Amen? We have to stir it up ourselves. If, if we're not passionate about God, we're really not knowing. that. According to what this says here, right? Formerly when you did not know God. There was some other stuff that you gravitated to. I want to spend my time doing this. I just need a little me time. I just need a little R&R. &R. You know, I heard people actually uh, in ministry say, I just need to flesh out a little bit. <laughs> Ever heard anybody say that? I just need to flesh out a little bit. Well, you know, we, we might need to relax a little bit. We might need to go on vacation and stuff because we are a three-part being, you know. But... Shouldn't there be like s s some major portion of our life that is consumed with our God if we say he's our only God? And we actually say that we know him? Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Can, can you really know God and not be impressed? Not be kind of overwhelmed? I'll tell you what, if, if Jesus were to show up in the flesh right now, would we just kind of... You know what I mean? Don't you like to hear stories of visions that people have? You know? 
I used to travel with Brother Hagin. A lot of people would come. They wanted to hear the stories about the miraculous uh, visions and things that would happen. And you know what? A lot of times those visions happened after hours of seeking the Father. You know what I mean? <laughs> he, the, he didn't have a vision <laughs> after watching the Denver Broncos lose the Super Bowl. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, now we, we'll, we'll watch the Super Bowl. We'll watch some other things. But it, he doesn't just impose himself in a vision upon us. I, you know, that, that might happen somewhere. But the person that is going to encounter the Father the way Jesus provided for us too is the one that is impressed by him. Amen? And actually lets the other stuff go. Amen? You know, people think they're not in pride when, when, when they're focusing on negative things in their life. Negative things. And they actually feel like they're being humble. Oh, well, this is, this is what... I, 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 I'm just not really good at that or I'm just really not good at that. And that's not really humility. Because <laughs> God takes us to a place where we actually believe in ourselves. Amen? That's the former way. That's the way of the law. It's about what I can or can't do. And Jesus says, I've come to make, give you something to rebel against that. You become rebellious against that. Oh, and you can begin to notice it. Do you ever get to where you really notice oppression coming on? You know what I mean? And it's always based upon the law, of some, some way of the law. Right? Yeah. Offense is always based upon the law. What somebody did to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's law, isn't it? That's why with love, you just don't get offended at all. That's the revolution. That's the revolution from resolutions. Nobody has to do anything right anymore. Right? <laughs> And again, this isn't freedom from doing what's right. It's freedom to do what's right. Amen? I like that. Formerly, when you did not know God, you were slaves to those who are by nature are not gods. But now that you know God, or rather are known by God. Do you want God to know you? Amen? You know, that's kind of an interesting little statement, isn't it? What's going to happen in the end time, at, at, at the judgment? He said, there's going to be a lot of people that say, we said, Lord, Lord. And he's going to say, depart from me because, it, because you never knew me? No, 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 I never knew you. How is God going to know us by us showing up once in a while? Amen? He's there all the time. He's knocking on the door all the time. And anyone who opens the door, he says, I'll come in, I'll sup with you. What will happen in that process? I'll know you. Amen? I want God to know me. Isn't that interesting? You know, you, you think, oh, he knows everything. He know Don't, Have you ever heard somebody say, well, God just knows my heart? Trying to get out of something, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and I think, Maybe he doesn't know your heart. Because you've never really opened it up and let him come in and get to know you the way he would like to. Amen? But now that you know God, or, or rather are known by God, how is it that you are turning back to those weak and miserable forces? Do you wish to be enslaved by them all over again? So that means it's possible. Right? I'll tell you what. Victory is continual in Christ. It's a continual possibility. <laughs> there is no victory where the law dominates. 
where we go back to that and we say that, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let myself be affected by it in the least. Amen? Is that true? It says, having been given all this, why would we ever go back? Why would I ever go back? You know what? Sometimes we get into a, a pattern of yielding to these that they're easy things to fall into. They're in our flesh, aren't they? You know what I'm saying? We hold something against somebody else. It doesn't matter how much they deserve it. What are you doing when you hold something against somebody else? You're, you're, it's law, isn't it? There is no love in that. You're going back to the old way. But you're an heir. Why are you acting that way? <laughs> Christ brought you out of that, made you a son. Now you don't have to worry about anything. You're an heir. Heirs don't act like that. But you're acting like that. Well, listen, you're just going right on back and, and serving those old unworthy gods again. Right? And you know what? It doesn't... It doesn't take much of it at all. It, it, again, you know the person that says they're good enough based upon what they're doing? All it does is you're just putting yourself right back in the law as soon as there's one thing. That's why, man, this renewal of, uh, of the mind isn't just getting a bunch of word inside of you to where you can spout out word. No, it's living it. Living the victory of the revolution. Amen? The separation from the power of the enemy to get you on even one little thing. Amen? Now, he calls us to perfection, doesn't he? Now, our status is, is perfect in him. We're made to be a son. But how do we start acting like that? We get a revelation of this. Amen? That we are free from those things. Hebrews eleven six. I'm just going to interject this one. And without faith it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. And that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. If we're going to have this relationship with him. You know just because just, it's, it's easy to say oh yeah I believe that he exists. But again, it's kind of like if Jesus were to stand up here right now, we'd be acting, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe. I'm just saying, if we really saw God the way he is, we really believe that he exists as he does, the more revelation of that just overwhelms your life. Amen? We're not like anybody else out there. We can't act like them. We can't be impressed by the news. We can't get into fear over earthquakes in Dallas. We can't get, we can't get into fear over ISIL or, or any of these things or, or our own government, you know? We, we, why? Because we believe he exists and he rewards those who diligently seek him. I'll tell you what. If you believe he exists... You diligently seek him. Amen? And again, what happens if you diligently seek him? You find him, and you want to hear his heartbeat, and you want to, right? And you're kind of a different person. You want to be different? Amen, I don't want to be, I don't want to be defeated. Have you, have you been defeated as a Christian? I have been. You know? And have you ever wondered, hey, I thought I, I thought I was doing this right. I thought I was doing that right. I thought I was giving. I thought I was confessing. I thought I was doing it. You know what? There's deliverance from that. <laughs> Amen? Because every one of those things need to be part of just the, the overflow of relationship with our God. Amen? <laughs> All right. Let me just give you this a little bit more. Is this good? Galatians 5. Verse 1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. And what has he set us free from? 
the law. What we do right or wrong. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. You're an heir. Live in the revolution. Let go of the resolution. Mark my words. I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Okay, I know circumcised isn't a real friendly word for all of us in this. It doesn't relate to some of us. But, but when we think of circumcised, that means don't let yourselves fall in to the, to the law. You have to do this to elevate yourself to this level. Right? Because he'll use it again here, so. <laughs> again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. So as soon as you fall into one realm where you feel like you have to do this, that means you're, you're over into the law now. You're out of grace. Amazing grace isn't yours no more. You don't get to sing that song. You don't get to sing Amazing Grace. <laughs> because if he saved a wretch like you, you're, all, you're, you're out of that realm now. Amen? And grace delivers you from the power of, of the do's and the don'ts. And it takes you a place. But how long does it do it? When you're seeking him. Amen? Grace doesn't fix you when you're seeking other gods. Right? It fixes you when you're seeking his face. It's his throne of what? Grace. And we can come boldly to that throne of grace. Do we have to? No, it's those who go there. And what do they find? They find help in the time of need. <laughs> What's the time of need? When you're tempted. When you're drawn away to something else. I'm going to go to my throne of grace. It's my place at the Father's side. Amen? And I'm going to go there and I'm going to have a good time with my Father. And all those things that used to, that were pulling me another way, He sets me free from them. Amen? Mark my words. Paul, uh, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circum... Oh, I don't say it all right, that... Um, Verse 4, you who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. Man, that sounds like a country and western song, doesn't it? <laughs> That's worse than lost my dog and all that. Right? For through the Spirit, we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. All those things that we would resolve to do on our own, by faith, we just let God bring them about in our life. Amen? By faith. We say, God, I'll tell you what, this has been precious in me. Some things in me that I'm just believing God for. It's just so good to say, God, I just believe you're doing it. Amen? I'm going to quit worrying about it. I'm going to quit feeling bad. I'm going to quit trying to fix it myself. I'm just going to run to you, take your word, and just believe it's true. Amen? Amen? What, what's what's ha happening when I'm doing I'm standing fast in the liberty that Christ has given me. I'm not letting myself be... We, we let ourselves. Yeah. We're brought... Uh, oh, I just have to worry about... What? Worry about something? I don't have to... I don't have to worry about anything. I've, been brought, I've probably been brought into a new realm. If I worry about it, what am I doing? I'm alienating myself from Christ. And grace isn't even effective in my life anymore. Why would I worry anymore? Why would I get upset anymore? <laughs> For through the Spirit... Okay, uh, verse 6. For in Christ Jesus... Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. What you do, what you don't do, doesn't matter at all. Now, there will be evidence when you're in him that will follow, right? The only thing that counts is faith. 
expressing itself through love. And that's what happens. What are we all called to? We're all called to love, right? Love does not exist where the law does. Right? Because what happens, we've been called out of that. And the only thing that by faith we do. Now, we don't try to love as works either. Have you ever talked that? <laughs> you ever seen that happen? Well, I'm just walking in love with that person. I'm just, I'm just going to walk in love towards them. They, and it's one of the hardest things I've done is, is walking in love towards them because they really did me. You, you know what they did wrong? I'll tell you what they did wrong. And I'm having to walk in love towards them. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, what happens in faith when you really believe in God? Who, who uh, pleases God? The one that believes that he is and he rewards those who diligently seek him. And who do those people end up being? The ones who express love. Amen? Because the only thing that counts is to believe in God, that he exists. He rewards those. What are you doing? You're having a relationship with him. You're delighting in the Lord. He's giving you the desires of your heart. And what, is in, what ends up happening? Love is expressed in your life. Right? <laughs> and what happens where love is expressed? There is no sin. You can't sin against somebody when love is, is dominating. Where does that love come from? From faith in God. Amen? So, the only thing that counts, the only thing that we need to be concerned with is knowing our Father, going to the throne of grace, laying down all those things. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Laboring to enter into rest. You familiar with that passage? That always seems kind of funny to me. But laboring to do the only thing that matters rest from our own works and just receive of the grace of God amen <laughs> you were running a good race who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth that kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough Again, all it takes is one do, one don't. And you're right back in the law because all it takes is one mess up and you're out. In Christ, all it takes is one choice of Him and He takes care of you. Amen? But you don't step over into Him and then step back over here. That's not a heart that's seeking Him. Amen? Seeking Him is, is a progression from one glory to the next glory it's, it's not stopping ever and it's becoming rebellious to the law rebellious to anything that enters into that one circumcision or uncircumcision right it's not about what we know what the revelation that we have above somebody else it's just that we know God amen I'm so thankful for the doctrine. I'm so thankful for revelation about the Spirit and some things like this, but do I want to enter into the law and say that somebody else has to, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. I am confident in the Lord that you will take no other view the one who is throwing you into confusion, whoever that may be, will have to pay the penalty. I like the first part of that, though. I'm confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. You're not going to listen to these other things. There's other, there's other teachings going on. Paul talks about this a lot. He says, man, there's other people trying to, to take you out of this liberty that you have in Christ. Why would you do that? He's taking you away from bondage to the law, what you can do or what you can't do. In Christ, we can do all things. Amen? <laughs> Every one of those things that we can do in Him are going to be right. Amen? Those things that we can do in Him are not wrong. They're not, they're not enabling the flesh. Everything that we can do in Christ is right. Every resolution that we would want for ourselves 
Yeah, I think even things about our weight and our health and, you know, some other things. He can help us, right? If we yield to him, what are we doing in a fast? We're saying, God, all these other things, and food in particular right here. I mean, we might be do doing some other things too, but food in particular for me in, the, in the, these 21 days, I'm going to say, God, and you know what's going to happen? I'm going to get a little healthier in the process. Just by putting him first. He can do that in every area of our life. Amen? <laughs> it takes us out of the resolution with the revolution of Christ. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the revelation, the light that your word shines into our heart. And Father God, we embrace it. We put our arms around it. We put our hearts around it, Lord God. And, and we put it deep in our hearts. So that when we're, we would otherwise be drawn away to another way of thinking, to another way of doing something, we're already secure in the truth that we have in you. God, this is, this, is the, this is the core. This is the reason. You took us out of darkness. The darkness of the law. The darkness of our inabilities. The darkness of somebody else's inabilities. You brought us into this place where we're enabled. We're enabled in Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, it's so sweet to trust in you, Lord God. It's so sweet to let all that stuff that used to draw us away from peace, all the stuff that used to draw us away from joy, all the stuff that used to oppress. Oh, God, we've been established in righteousness in Christ. Far from oppression, we don't fear, and from terror, it doesn't even come close to us anymore. We've rebelled against that stuff. And the world has no dominance on us anymore. Lord, that's who we've been made to be as heirs. We're not slaves anymore. Lord, we're, we've been given this spirit of adoption. We say, Abba, Father. Oh, Lord, we just adore you. Oh, Lord, we, we put on Christ. We clothe ourselves in Christ and find ourselves overwhelmed by how amazing you are. Take us to a deeper place in you. Cause us to be impressed, we pray. Oh, Father, that, that way more than the things of this earth, you draw us by our hearts, Lord God. Oh, God, I pray that you would know us. You would know us by the frequency of our seeking. You would know us by the passion with which we respond to your knocking hallelujah oh God may we not be passive in the least may we pursue you with all of our hearts hallelujah may we love you with all of our hearts may you displace everything else and be the God of our hearts hallelujah let's stand up and just worship him